and the, well, the, the familiar images of riots, and the whole area being destroyed, leading to a whole number of riots around England, Hansworth, uh, Hansworth, an area in Birmingham, where also this very militant reggae group then made an album about calling it Hansworth Revolution. We talked about this before at the very first lecture. This is the, where, where they more or less show that what is, what is this revolution? This revolution is just us not taking it anymore. And us being the Rastas, us breaking out of our captivity, breaking down the walls of Babylon, breaking, uh, chasing out the, uh, the white oppressors and achieving our own and you, it's difficult to, to deny the, uh, the kind of religious overtones to achieve our own kingdom uh, here on earth, to achieve freedom, the promised land. But then the promised land found right in the center of London, because it's a strange paradoxical situation where they, are, where they feel themselves as exiles, but they also refuse to go away. So they just bring Jamaica to uh, Birmingham instead of going from Birmingham back to Jamaica. So here you can see all the riots uh, uh, spreading out through England in the early 80s, uh, late 70s, with Broadwater Farm as being merely its, its last and most dramatic big one. Now back to uh, architecture. Um, one of the one of the very strange things of our profession is that all that stuff that I have just talked about to you, which maybe explains the kind of clumsiness and with which I talk about it, is completely uh, disregarded and completely declared of no interest at all uh, to uh, architecture and urban planning. So even if uh, so this, this whole kind of subcultural mess, this soup of music styles and politics and violence and immigration, etc., this whole messy soup is completely, we, we as architects are, are completely, uh, how do you say, out of our depth when we try to understand this stuff. So whenever there are uh, problems in an uh, whenever there are su such huge, huge problems in an area of our own making, what we do as architects and planners is to also search for the root of the problems and therefore also for the solution in the architecture and urban planning itself. What I mean by this is that uh, as I hope to have shown you, uh, riots, and I, I didn't even say much about it, but you could see it from the images, the riots happened in all kinds of uh, urban uh, environments. You could see Victorian, uh, so late 19th century terraced housing, you could see uh, modernist uh, housing slabs, you could see, you could see whatever you, you whatever, whatever. And so, this does not suggest that there is a clear relationship between the crime and the design. However, the Broadwater Farm uh, riots, but also some of the other riots, because sometimes there were also uh, modernist housing estates being uh, involved, Led to, a whole, led to a reaction uh, that was purely architectural, in a way. It led to a reaction on the part of the planners and the arch and s architects and, and researchers that the root cause must lie in the design itself. And in a way, I mean, I'm not a psychologist, but in a way that's understandable because it would be much easier to accept that it would be the, the, the mistake or the fault of the architecture and the planning uh, because then we would be able to control it. If it were these things like uh, 
hundreds of years of oppression, imperialism, racism, uh, etc., or just the, the criminal element in society, things like this, we would be absolutely powerless to do anything about it. So uh, it's maybe even better that it is the, the mistake of the, uh, of the planning. And so what you had in the, in the middle 80s, uh, when Broadwater Farm has happened, was uh, the, begi or the beginning an, an, uh, an enormous wave of hatred and of disdain and of criticism, to put it more mildly, of modernist design. In 1985, there, there, sh there would have been a huge Le Corbusier uh, exhibition in the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. And then Broadwater Farm happened and all the sponsors retracted their money. And so the exhibition did not happen. Because surely Le Corbusier, who had then died 14 years before, no, 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 21 years before actually, who had died uh, during swimming in the south of France, this dead Swiss architect was blamed for the, uh, for the, the crimes and the violence in the British uh, inner cities. So, it, it, actually, if you think about it, very strange. But in this period, in the, in the early uh, 80s, early and middle 80s, all of a sudden, uh, the whole political consensus turned against uh, these types of high-rise planning because they engendered violence, crime, oppression, etc. So that's why I now want to just flash back a little bit and go back to the, to the reasons why and how this er these areas had been designed. One of the things that was being said in the middle 80s was that these, these things were just being put down as factory-made prefab blocks with absolutely no regard for how people live. They were just kind of third-rate, cynical, purely quantitative uh, um, uh, versions of Le Corbusier's utopian idea of the city. So these things were, these places were um, con convicted for two things for being utopian and for being cynical, which is, a, which is in a way does not really go together very well. But what I want to show to you is that uh, this was absolute, this, the first part of this accusation is absolutely not true. Even if we look at them now and we say, my God, how could, how could they have built such a cheap, such a rough, such a, such a, uh, a kind of monotonous, uh, a mountain of, of concrete for these people, they must have not cared at all. It must have just been like, uh, we need 5,000 houses and we need them now. But the opposite was true. The design of Broadwater Farm was an absolute uh, result of idealist uh, planning that put at the center of the story uh, the life of the people, that put at the center of the story the way that people live together, that put at the center of the story a kind of new idea of community, a new idea of, of, uh, of being together, a new idea of public space. These areas were, were, uh, were utopian, idealist, they were romantic, and they were uh, complete, they were also adventurous, and in that way they were completely belonging to the culture of the 60s, and a lot less to the culture of the 30s and, and 20s where Le Corbusier uh, f lived in. For example, here you can see, in, in all the literature you, for example, find that uh, the Broadwater farm area was not even designed by architects but just by builders. It's absolutely not true. It was built by the designers uh, working for the council of, uh, of Tottenham, of the, this area, and they put in everything that they had learned uh, from their teachers at that time. These were young idealist uh, uh, designers that deliberately did not want to work for private offices, 
but that everything that they had learned from their teachers, they wanted to put at the service of the people, so they went to work for the council. And uh, for example, here you can see the, uh, the, uh, the, the section through this building block in the middle, the ziggurat, the Tangmir building, in which PC Blakelock was murdered. And what you can see here is an English version of uh, what also uh, was uh, later uh, was tried out here in the Netherlands, uh, the Kashba. So it is uh, by Piet Blom, meaning that uh, you create a new level of urban life above uh, the, uh, the level of the car parks and the cars, so that you, you uh, relieve the people, you uh, liberate them from the, uh, the, um, the destructive forces of the car, and you create a new place for them where their houses, all where, where they can form na little neighborhoods within the building, where the children can play in places that are intimate, where, the, where the, uh, the pedestrian is the boss and not uh, the car driver and where the people, it's, it's, a nearly, uh, it's an idea of using um, modernist techniques of uh, systems building and uh, high modernist design with the intimacy of, for example, traditional uh, cities, tra traditional vi villages. So, uh, it's maybe difficult to recognize right now, but what you can see here is you can see the people, the, the, the level of the people is on the on the on the uh, second, the first and second floors, and underneath that you have the cars, and so the people own the building. And so you you have it here that there, and then the, these uh, walkways create a kind of second network that is uh, smaller, that is richer, that is not hierarchic, so you don't have like all the buildings on one boulevard-like street and then you go, in, you go through the street and then you go le right or left and there's your building. No, there's a, a park where people can play. Above that there's a kind of a network of a pedestrian walkway, so, every, so you, there are many different ways of finding your own house. So the effect is to create a kind of richness of experience and a kind of um, uh, unpredictab un unpredictable free use of the city that escapes from the simple hierarchic schemes of the block on the street. <laughs> but <laughs> policemen? And then, of course, this is what it leads to, but the idea behind it, you can see it here standing, it, the idea behind it is that it, it would be this shining new city form that would be, uh, that would be a real alternative for the, for the depressing, monotonous, red brick, dark, endless, uh, uh, British workers' housing that you see in the, in the foreground. And the interesting thing is, of course, that this foreground idea has always been the, um, the image of British depression, these endless rows of workers' housing. And now, of course, the image at the end is the image of working-class depression. But Originally, it was seen to be the liberating moment, the, the white citadel for the people that would offer them something that they would not have had in this Victorian model. Now, this obsession with, or this, I, this obsession in Britain with uh, doing away with the old and freeing freeing the, uh, the urban working classes and lower middle classes from their depressed, red brick, dark surroundings was, of course, originally triggered by a very, uh, for m n uh, many cities, a very uh, productive event. I can say that as somebody from Rotterdam, uh, the bombing during the war. The bombings, the blitz, the, uh, 
the attacks of the German Air Force on London during the war that created a destruction that was many times greater than that of Rotterdam, also created these so-called bomb sites throughout the city. And these bomb sites, in many ways, became the places where the 